There is a hidden history that's been deliberately obfuscated from the peoples of the world, and that's why I am on the trail of the Nephilim. The Genesis 6 narrative states that the Nephilim are on the earth in those days and also afterwards. If that's true, can we find evidence that corroborates this? I'm L.A. Marzulli. Join me as we go on the trail of the Nephilim. Today we're going to circle back to Israel. I think you'll find this program incredible. Uh, there was an archaeologist whom I've never met, but I've, I watched his presentation on Tel Gezer in Israel. It was great. We were there in 2019. We filmed there. Um, and we'll be showing that clip. It's from number seven of the On the Trail series. But before I get into that, here's a word from our sponsor. Do you remember how Facebook went down in October of 2021? And not just Facebook, but many websites around the world were down for hours. Folks, I remember that. And, you know, it's, that's how we make our living on the net. And when that goes down, you know, people don't buy books and DVDs. And anyway, I digress. That is how easy it is to shut down access to websites. There was another internet outage in Canada just recently where people could not even use debit cards. I remember that also. But internet may still be working. It's the domain names that do not work. This is why you cannot rely only on old school internet websites. You will simply be cut off from information during a societal collapse or an emergency. Thankfully, there is now a social media platform called Bastion that does not depend on legacy internet. I am active on Bastion. We just started this, and I ask that you would go, just go check it out. You'll see it right there. You can see it in front of you. It's under Marzuli. So now you can follow me there. You can download their app through a link below this video. It works like Bitcoin, speaking to computers around the world. So you can never be blocked from seeing me and other bloggers other people who create content, as long as basic internet is running. Bastion is anonymous, even has Tor network built in, so there's no need for a VPN. You can just follow me there. Bastion devs announced that any followers who comments my videos on Bastion at least twice will get a gift of two pocket coin automatically on their Bastion profile. So this is pretty cool. That means, you know, you're, you're earning money. Get the link below and be free from centralized internet. Let me show you how easy it is to register. Once you download the app and install it, select sign up. You will simply create a nickname. Mine, of course, is Marzuli. No personal information is required. You can add an avatar to your profile. You will get a special private key. And it's really long. So you want to copy that and put it in your notes. This is your login and password all in one. You have to write down or copy it and put it in notes or whatever. But you have to write down this private key. Don't show it to anyone. It cannot be recovered if lost. So, folks, I'm on Bastion now. Um, just in case the unthinkable happens, we've stopped doing PPS report. And this is why we uh, have another, another site. And we're excited about that. And you can just go follow me right over there and uh, never miss another show. So follow me over to Bastion.com. That's Bastion.com. I truly believe that Tel Gezer is a Nephilim site. There's no doubt about that. This will be two parts. You'll see the clip. It's from number seven of our On the Trail series. And I would, again, uh, ask you to go to OnTheTrailWithLA.com or streaming.lamarzuli.net streaming.lamarzuli.net or on the trail with la.com. Download the films because there's so much information. I travel all over the world um, probing into places that most people never even heard of. Our tour guide when we were at Tel Gezer goes, what do you want to come here for? And you'll see that in the film. Kuti couldn't understand why we wanted to go to Tel Gezer. By the way, um, I will be leading an Israel tour in 2023. Uh, in Israel, it's it's in October, so it's late. You can go to Lipkin Tours, look up my name, and up it will come. 
And um, when you sign up for that, you'll get an Armor Trail of a Nephilim book. Let me show you what that looks like. You'll get this book, Armor Trail of a Nephilim. You'll also get Counter Move, that's the latest book, plus, um, <coughs> excuse me, the Cosmic Chess Match. You'll get that, all seven of the films on the trail. So it's our way of thanking you for signing up. But what that will do is it will prep you for where you're about to go. Because this tour is unlike any other tour. It strictly deals with the Nephilim sites because they were there. That is ground zero for the Nephilim. So I'm going to roll the clip here in just a minute. Uh, and I'll let the, you know, raise up to the locator. I'll let the thing speak for itself. I'll weigh in on, on the other side. But heads up, folks, this is for number seven, Lost Civilizations and our ongoing on the trail of a Nephilim series. Which, let's hop back over to um, Israel again. We went to a place called Tel Gezer. Mm -hmm. Sort of an out of the place, you know, off the map. In fact, our tour guide, Kudi, was going, why do you want to come <laughs> here? He was like really perplexed by that. And we saw uh, an ancient Canaanite village, but again, there's a, a tunnel yeah. which goes deep into the earth. And uh, apparently it went, it, it continued a good ways and in part of a collapse, so they were afraid. Mm -hmm. um, we want to go back into that tunnel, but the tunnel was 20 feet tall. Yeah. And why does a, a six-foot Canaanite guy need a 20-foot tunnel? Your thoughts? Well, there, and, well, in addition to that, there's this consistency with the standing stones that we saw there that, again, are very astronomical, which match, you know, again, the Middle East, Levant, uh, Egypt, all just grand things, you know, large, um, you know, Gilgal Raphaim there. The, the center is is 21 feet plus tall. Mm -hmm. So you you have all these gigantic large um, societies, or at least as the, as the way that they build, and you begin out of nowhere, where, you know, the ziggurats, you know, in Babylon, in, you know, in, in, the, in the Mesopotamian era, same thing. What, what do we have with all this? I find it interesting that when you do venture off from, biblically speaking, uh, from the text, okay, not necessarily archaeologically in what we can show, but um, you know, they come off the, the Ark in roughly 3300 BC, and all of a sudden, boom, you have these cultures originating and, and expanding immediately from, from no previous cultures. And from, you know, the flood ends in Genesis 9, and then Genesis 14, you, you fast forward to the time of Abraham, roughly 2100 BC, 2000 BC, and there it mentions that you in in the in the Bashan area, right. the land of the Rephaim. The Rephaim are there. You're like, well, where did these guys come from? We right. saw them annihilated in the flood in Genesis six, and now all of a sudden, here they are. They're back. Again. They're back, yeah. and, and and they're in the same location. In the same location. Looking at the cavern below, the ceiling is about twenty feet. Why do you think it's that way? Ah, uh, that's a really good question. Um, could be because they were taller. Could be because uh, you're dealing with the taller uh, people. I have, I have no idea. Okay. But um, we know there's got to be something else going on, just than, other than just being a water system. There's um, really no point to be digging a water system quite so deep and, and uh, with, uh -huh. uh, with steps like that. So the uh, standing stones and the, the niches in the wall really make us think there's some kind of cultic significance to it as well. If they're there, we don't we don't know how long. We just kind of know the, the the last part that we would see them, at least in Abraham's time for sure. But there's Gilgal Rephaim, you know, right there. Which, if it has a 3000 BC date, you wonder this was the land of the giants. Mm -hmm. And here, right there, you have this grand, uh, very astronomical um, construction. And so it's consistent if you extrapolate that into all the major cultures. And then that that's why you know, as you know, when you go to Peru. You, we get all these large, uh, even in the in the, the pyramid, the, the, in the Casma Valley, huge. I mean, it's 90 feet tall, it's 500 feet wide, and why pyramids everywhere? Yeah. There's, and, and there's of course, like a central origination of some kind. And the civilization comes in, there's no pre-existing culture, yep. all this just comes, you know, ready-made to go, and then poof, it's gone. And it's gone. And no one knows what happened to it. And I find that just incredible. These really are lost civilizations, and it is global. There it seems is, to yeah. be a, a, a westward migration from the Levant out into um, the Mediterranean, mm -hmm. um, Sicily, Sardinia, mm -hmm. Gozo, Malta, and, and then further. And then finally, we see the same type of megalithic structures in Spain and France and England, mm -hmm. and then over here, mm -hmm. where instead of stone, they're building with earth. What do you think is going on here? Well, you know, yeah, again, even um, what we know archaeologically is that. Um, 
Procopius was a Greek historian, roughly 500 AD, and he is writing during the wars of Justinian, one of the emperors, and he writes about this um, pillar that he sees. And in the pillar, it talks about this migration that has taken place from Joshua, the son of Nun, you know, which is you know 1400 BC. And this pillar is commemorating these Phoenician saints in like Phoenician Hebrew writing. Uh, it's out on the northwest corner of Africa. And it talks about their migration from the Levant area all the way over to the, you know, to the pillars. Of there's no, um, there's no lack of against archaeological information there as it relates to showing an ancient source. Secondly, as we know from our work uh, looking at the people of Paracas that you know we've clearly demonstrated, or at least the, the data clearly demonstrated, a migration from the Black Sea area, from yeah. the Middle East. Yeah. So uh, the data is there. It, it's, not, it's not lying. It doesn't even require interpretation. It's just what it says. It is what it is. So here's something to think about. I say this every show. There is a hidden history. You guys know this by now. But on Thursday, I'm going to really delve into this, kind of do a deep dive, because the archaeologist who was there circa 1902, right in that area, <clears throat> discovered some things which were unbelievable. And this, again, of the work is the work of the archaeologist, who his name is Joel. I can't remember his last name, but I'll have that for you on Thursday. And I'll have a link. You can go to his presentation and look at it. I have a slightly different take than what he concludes with, but that's okay. But he's, he's, a, he's a great filmmaker, does a great job. And watching his presentation on Tel Gezer, he had some new information that I didn't know about, I wasn't aware of. But of course, you just watched the film. And in that, I'm asking the archaeologist on site at Tel Gezer, what does the five foot six Canaanite guy need with a 20 foot tunnel? And he said, yeah, we're still trying to figure that out. It is a Nephilim site, there's no doubt about that. Uh, sacrifice, human sacrifice was practiced there. There's no doubt about that either. And I will get into that on uh, Thursday when we circle back and do another On the Trail of a Nephilim show. By the way, we will be uh, September. Coming up in a couple of weeks, we'll be up in Yuba City. Hope to see you there. Uh, it's going to be great. Derek Gilbert, Dave Bryan, uh, and others will be speaking. I'm not sure how many times I will speak, at least twice, possibly three or four times. I don't know. But we'll see what happens. Looking forward to meeting all of you. It's always great to meet the folks and uh, get a face-to-face. -face. And um, if you've got testimonies, we are bringing our camera gear so we can do supernatural confrontations. If you've had a supernatural confrontation and you want to share that, shoot an email over to our producer, John Adam Hicks, at supernatural at lamarzulli.net. That's supernatural at lamarzulli.net. So that, that's about it for today. I think it's... Um, <clears throat> If that doesn't whet your appetite for the rest of a series, because we go to all these places, and there's no other series like it. There's no other series like it. And we are working on number eight. I keep, I keep threatening that we're going to release it. We've had some setbacks. We're doing the best we can. That will come out this year. Boy Scouts honor. Anyway, folks, remember, there is a hidden history that's been deliberately obfuscated from the peoples of the world, and that is why I am on the trail of the Nephilim. Thanks so much for watching.